from the book of Isaiah the prophet. Prophet Isaiah. Chapter 60. The prophet Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 1, by the grace of our Lord. Isaiah 61. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The, de the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitudes of camels shall cover your land and dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together to you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roosts? Surely the coastlands shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish will come first to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them to the name of the Lord your God and to the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified you. The sons of the foreigners shall build up your walls, and their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day and night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings and procession. For the nation and kingdom which will not serve you shall perish and those nations shall be utterly ruined. Let us also go further down and read the last two verses from this chapter. Verses 21 and 22. Also your people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Amen. Isaiah the prophet, a man that God chose, indeed so that he may proclaim the will of God during the period of the Old Testament, but also to declare prophecies that are unique, Rightfully, the scholars of the scriptures call him the fifth evangelist, as he has mentioned with great detail the birth of Jesus Christ, and indeed the con his conception from Mary the Virgin, but also in general, he has prophesied the things concerning Jesus Christ, about his crucifixion, about his resurrection, but he has also prophesied about the work of Jesus Christ on earth, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. And after he prophesied clearly about the first apostolic church, in chapter 60, he prophesies about the last apostolic church, which is the church of glory of the latter days. A church that is unique, whose main characteristic is the first and second verse that we read. As God, the Holy Spirit, testifies and says, Arise, shine. We'll see it later on. You, O church of the latter days, for your light has come, 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, very soon, darkness shall cover all the earth, and deep darkness, very deep and thick darkness of hell, of the underworld, world, will cover all the people. This is the prophecy regarding the future, but before this thing that will happen in the future, with the revelation of the Antichrist upon all the earth, as the Word of God reveals to us in the New Testament, that the time of temptation will come, which is going to come upon the whole world to test all who dwell on the face of the earth. These are seven years of darkness, of deep darkness, which will, which will come, and nobody can change this because it has been prophesied by God, and when God speaks a prophecy, then this prophecy will definitely come to pass. But at the same time, he says, before this darkness comes, and before this deep gloom comes over all the earth and all the nations. But upon you, O church of God, the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. But this is not only the point to which the word of God refers to about the church of glory of the latter days, but at the same time he has said, that the mountain of the house of the Lord will be exalted above all other mountains, and all people will run into it, seeking from the Lord to teach them. Indeed, it says it very clearly. Come, they say, all nations and people who will enter this one church, the holy and apostolic church, as it is revealed in the Song of Songs, Many will be the queens, 70 queens, 80 concubines, innumerable young women. But during that period of the latter days, there will be one dove of the Lord, the blameless one. The one that was begotten and is like her mother, which is the first apostolic church. So in this church of the latter days, they will say, let us ascend to the house of the Lord, to the mountain of God, and there the Lord will teach us His ways so that we may walk in His paths. And furthermore, he refers to, in the prophet Isaiah, in chapter 25, it says that on that mountain there will be a great blessing, and indeed the characteristic of it will be that in this mountain... God will destroy him who covers with a covering. Covers people with a covering, being unbelievers, as the Apostle Paul says. The ruler of this world, the devil and Satan, the God of this world, has blinded their mind so that the brightness of the gospel cannot shine on them. And in this mountain of the latter days, the Lord will shine and he will bring to nothing him who covers with a covering of unbelief, but also that covering of unbelief itself he will make, he will turn to nothing, will destroy it. And then what the Apostle Paul describes will take place, which is that he will swallow up death in victory. And the Apostle Paul says that when this corruptible puts on incorruptibility, when this mortal put on immortality, then what is written shall take place, that death was swallowed up in victory. And so, as we return to chapter 60 that we read of in the book of Isaiah the prophet, who now describes in detail what will happen what will be happening during those last days, those few last days in the church of God. But we must not neglect to say that the Apostle Peter has prophesied to us before all these things happen, before the seven-year reign of the Antichrist comes, the darkness and the gloom, 
before the blessing comes, the perfect blessing of God over the church of the latter days, the time will come when the judgment of God will begin with the house of God. The judgment of God for cleansing, for holiness. As it is only God and only by the Holy Spirit that God can blow again with, with force over the church of the latter days and to clean out his threshing floor so that he may prepare his threshing floor for the last days of the glory of God. So in this church where the Lord calls the house of my glory, he himself says that I will glorify the house of my glory as nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. And he encourages with faith that we look with faith. And this is the message, my dear brethren, that I believe God wants to give us today. Let us look around us with faith. For all those people. That we people as we see them. We look at them and we don't understand what God is going to do. But God who knows our past. Our present and our future. Assures us. That you must. Look around. Lift up your eyes and see through the eyes of faith. Through the word of God. All they are gathered together. All they gather together, they are coming to you. Those who grieve you today, the ones who despise you today, the ones who forsake you today, even more, they hate you and they avoid you. This is the miracle, my dear brethren, of the latter days. That we turn carefully and look around us for all those who grieve us, who despise us, who avoid us and forsake us and even hate us, maybe. They all shall be the ones that God will invite the ones that God will approach with his unique way and by changing their heart and their logic and by revealing to them the gospel of Christ which is the power of God that saves all those who believe so he will reveal to them the gospel of Christ, the power of God. And very easily, without our attempt, without our worrying helping at all, without our fear helping at all, God himself will transform The wolves even, which in reality they are not, but we see them as wolves. A classic example of such people and of such a person was Saul, who became the apostle of the nations, the apostle Paul, a persecutor, a barbarian over the church of Christ, who at some point came for the Lord to visit him, to destroy him off his horse of his pride, to throw him to the ground blind, only with light that surpasses the brightness of the sun. He blinds him. He opens his ears and he hears the voice of the Lord. So easy, so quickly, at the appointed moment by God, that God will decide to visit the ones who grieve you, 
the ones who despise you, the ones who abandon you, who hate you, and who avoid you, possibly even with, with, with disgust, even. One moment, one moment of God's visitation is enough to transform man into a lamb of the Lord and to a man of God to change the desires of his flesh from sinful to holy, the desires of his heart from wicked to good, and the logic of his spirit from proud to humble by giving him a spirit that is humble and quiet. One moment. What God is seeking from you is for you to keep his word to persevere. Just as God does not delay in his coming as some consider this to be slothfulness or but he long he suffers long. He waits patiently, waiting for the time of visitation of Jesus Christ to come when he will invite like the good shepherd the lambs of his pasture and he will separate them from the goats of this world one moment be patient until that moment but be careful do not lose your courage for that reason, we must be filled in the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit that God has given us. Not a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. But also let us don't be discouraged and lose heart. For that reason, Christ says, I want you to pray at all times and to not lose heart. And you will see the glory of God that will dawn as it is described by the Word of God, He will dawn over you and He will be revealed in the church. A short while more patience and the Lord is the one who is able and will transform people from persecutors full of hatred and wrath. As the Apostle Paul had, firstly, Saul, who will turn them into people who will glorify and serve the name of our Lord. He will change their hearts so that they may be able to love and to humble themselves and to repent. He will change their spirit so that they may be able to forgive and also to express before other people the work of God with words of faith and power. And later on, He will baptize them in the Holy Spirit as well. For it is written, Furthermore, upon my men servant and maid servants during that time, I will pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And he will give them also a mission as our Lord Jesus Christ also has a mission who says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For this reason he has anointed me to bring good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to those who are captives, to proclaim recovery, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to comfort all those who mourn by leading them into Zion, the church, the heavenly Jerusalem of the latter days. And there I will transform their ashes into beauty and their mourning 
and to oil of joy. And the garm and the spirit of heaviness, of carelessness and, and filth, I will put it aside and um, clothe them in garment of praise, and I will then call them trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. What a great work there is ahead of us, which if we see it by believing in the word of God, and we do not lose faith, if we see it with faith in the word of God, then we will enjoy it here on earth, but also forever and ever. Now the crucial point is, do you believe this? If you believe it, you will see the glory of God. If you do not believe it, the glory of God will pass by you, and you will not understand what happened. It is written, and the Bible cannot be broken. The judgment of God will begin first from the house of God. There we mustn't lose heart. There we must remain steadfast and immovable. Fighting the good fight as the Apostle Paul did. Walking in the way exactly the way that God has prepared by His divine and godly providence for every one of us. And making sure that we preserve our faith in Jesus Christ and in His words. It is a race, but it is a good race. It is a course that is set before us. And a difficult path, but it leads to everlasting life. It is devotion that you preserve your faith, immovable. Because the house of God is made up of members of the body of Jesus Christ. And the head is Christ himself. Is Christ your head? Do you receive orders and commands from him? Do you truly live in Christ Jesus? There is no condemnation in those who live in Christ Jesus. But, that is those who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. It is a struggle. It is a struggle for you to strive to enter through the narrow gate. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. But these two lead to eternal life. It is a struggle. God did not promise us a life that was spread out with rose petals. He did not promise us a broad and broad gate in an easy way. He doesn't encourage us to walk in this. Even though there is the broad gate and the easy way, He doesn't tell us to walk through that. On the contrary, He encourages us with power, with truth. And he tells us, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life. And the way is Christ. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And because God knows our nature, our human nature, our weakness, our mistakes, our sins, he has given us weapons that are astounding, that are unbeatable. He has given us the blood of Jesus Christ that cleans us from all types of sin, of all kinds of sin. And we thank God for that. I remember there was an old woman. She came to confess and she said, God can't forgive me. I said, why, Grandma? Because I've done this. I said, yes, but the blood of Jesus Christ cleans us from all sin. Yeah, but I've done that. The blood of Jesus Christ cleans us from all sin. And I've done this and that and the other from all sin, from all sin. And in the end, 
she lifted up her hand and she glorified God saying, From all sin, the blood of Jesus Christ cleans me. An astounding weapon that has been given. It is being poured out, continues to be poured out on the cross of Calvary by faith in the word of God. For the remission, for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins. But there is also another even more glorious weapon as we go further and the glory of God is revealed in the life of the Christian. He who believes and is baptized in water shall be saved. What is this thing? It's baptism saves. Unto the testimony of a good conscience, that is. As man participates through baptism and the circumcision of Christ and the circumcision made without hands, not of the flesh, as with baptism and only with baptism, he puts off the body of the sins of the flesh. Of course, his sins have been forgiven, but now they must also leave from upon him. What? What must leave the body of the sins of the flesh, and he must put on Christ after he puts off the body of the sins of his flesh, as it is written that whoever are baptized in Christ Jesus, they put on Christ Jesus. And now the Christian is ready to go forward into the greater weapon even. The greater power that is given by God. As it is written, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses so that you may fulfill your mission. Because Jesus Christ is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and in fire. And here now is the man who is equipped with the weapons of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He can now overcome. He can beat the world. He can beat himself. He is able to resist the devil and the devil will flee from him as long as this man of God chooses not only to live according to the Spirit but to also walk according to the Spirit. This whole training will be done when the judgment of God will begin from the house of God. And the result will be your children, your people will all be righteous, justified with the blood of Christ, without sins, being put off, putting off the body of their sins, with the power of the Holy Spirit, which is not a spirit of cowardice, but of power and might and of a sound mind. So that all your sons and your people will be righteous. They will inherit the land forever. The branch of my plantation and the church will be the branch of his plantation. The work of my hands so that through him we may glorify The Lord will hasten this in its own time. Amen.